Welcome everyone to the Puppet Parent Podcast. Thanks for coming on back. Uh, we've got lots to talk about today, but I want to introduce our very, very special guest who I'm very excited to hear about because uh, like, because for so many different reasons about like, how, how has she been doing? Like, how has she transitioned throughout this, uh, this pandemic? My goodness, so many questions. Who is she? Uh, so many questions. It's, it's our good friend, your good friend. Well, my my good friend and soon to be yours, uh, Lenore <laughs> Koppelman, uh, famous face painter extraordinaire of the Cheeky Chipmunk. And I know Lenore as a fellow mom and also as a fellow children's entertainer. Um, we worked a lot of the same circuits. Um, and so uh, we have a lot of... Uh, the similar stresses that are happening right now uh, in our industry. Um, and uh, I'm really interested to um, have a conversation with you, see how you've been faring the last three months, um, how you've been using the time. And we just want to tell people about the work that you do and what you've been up to because I, well, I know, and it's pretty cool. Oh, I just want okay. to say, yeah. yeah so I hi. Know. How have we been faring, you know? I don't know. I don't know how we've been faring. <laughs> We've been faring okay. We try. <laughs> I am not a puppeteer myself, if you couldn't tell from that. Um, but yeah, this is Miguel. Hello. <laughs> and I love making puppets with body paint. And he is covered in biodegradable glitter, which is good for the environment, and vegan body paint. So that's Miguel. Um, how have I been doing? Yay. Um, so it's, it's a transition. I really miss the kids a lot. I live in Astoria, um, and I'm used to entertaining kids all over New York City. And hey, I'm and used wait, to painting and, and kids. Wait, wait, pause, pause, pause. So uh, some of the people yeah. that are watching have probably no idea of, 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 of your work because they're just like, they're just in for the puppet story. So. I'm gonna share the screen with all of your work to, to so everyone can see while you're talking about this. What an amazing oh cool face painter. Okay, please proceed. We'll click through. So um yeah I I oh this kid was great because he really wanted to get this insect on his face and his mother is terrified of insects and he didn't want to get painted at all. The mom was like, come on, you gotta get face painted. We're at a party and he didn't want to do it. So he got a bug to scare her just to sort of get her and spent the rest of the party chasing after her with this bug on his face. It was great. Um, I love painting kids. I love painting adults too, but something about painting kids is so exciting and magical to me. And I feel like the reason why I was put here on this earth was to create artwork for children and to connect with kids through art. Um, and so I've been doing face painting, body painting, and children's entertaining for about eight and a half years now. Um, and I, I eat, sleep, and breathe it. It's all I want to do. So when COVID came along and I couldn't attend parties because of social distancing, um, you know, parties weren't happening anymore. And you had to be six feet apart. It's really hard to paint your canvas when they're six feet away from you. <laughs> oh, can you guess what movie this is from? Yo, Dark Crystal. Can you take yes, very good. Um, yeah, I, I thought, what am I gonna do? How am I gonna paint people if I can't touch them or go near them? So at first I was painting, um, you know, like faces on paper that I would drop off I would hose it down with Lysol, put it in a Ziploc bag, you know, put my little gloves on, pack it up, bring it to the kids and say, you know, like leave it in the mailbox so that they could pose with it in front of their faces and pretend like they had a little mask. And I thought that's really cute, but I wanted to reach more people. So I thought, okay, how do I reach more kids and adults that have that kid inside of them? that is yearning for something really fresh and exciting and new, um, but that also really plays into that nostalgia that is the whole reason why I love entertaining for kids. I, I'm a sucker for nostalgia. Um, and so I thought, okay, I am going to learn how to illustrate. Now I can promise you there's a huge difference 
between face painting and illustrating. Um, so I have been on, like since, since quarantine started, this intensive, like hours per day mission to learn how to illustrate for kids. And now I'm like, okay, I still wanna be a face painter. Um, and I still wanna be a body painter, but now I wanna illustrate children's books and I wanna make prints for kids and cards and, and all of these things. So I have been taking some courses online and just really immersing myself in that whole process. Amazing. Yeah, and as we're going through here, you can see a mix. We didn't have time to put it in order, but um, of, of Lord Lenore's uh, actual face yeah. painting with <laughs> kids and then it's some of her butterfly. recent stuff uh, that you've been doing. It's just amazing. I'm just so impressed with some of the stuff. In fact, I'd love to revisit it towards the end too and, and just show, uh, show off um, sure. some of the pieces because um, it's just amazing. So what was the, um, so what, when, you, oh, yeah. when, when you were first um, faced with the transition was, was learning to be an illustrator and doing like art for kids books and art for kids. Was this something you always wanted to do, but you're like, you know what? Uh, like I got, I got so much going on and it's just like way on the back burner. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, it started when I got into, I went from, um, body painting to learning maternity belly painting, which is one of my specialties. And I go to conventions when we're allowed to have conventions for body painters and teach them belly painting. And my students would always say to me, do you illustrate kids books? And I'd say, no, I, I don't know how to do that. Um, and they'd say, you should do that. And I would say, well, you know, it's one thing to paint a belly and you have this one design that you take hours doing. It's another thing to, you know, I don't know anything about digital art or about all these other mediums. Painting a still sheet of paper versus skin is very different. And so I, but I wanted to do it. I just didn't know how. I even toyed with the idea of having all the pictures in the children's book be things like Miguel here or like belly on bellies. And I thought, could I do that? Because I really at the time didn't know how to do art in any other way. Um, and then um, a mutual friend of ours, which you may know, Laura Cradas, um, if you're watching, hey, Laura. <laughs> she came to me, um, she lives in Astoria. She came to me, I guess about um, a month and a half ago and says, hey, I'm interested in writing a children's book. Would you illustrate it? And my initial thought was, yes, I don't know how, but yes. <laughs> so I told her, I said, I don't know how to do that, but I'm going to figure it out and I'm going to learn how to do it. And as soon as I feel comfortable enough that I can do it justice, I will do that. So I bought myself a Procreate, uh, I mean, uh, an iPad the very next day, got Procreate, and then started doing about nine hours a day of just trying to learn how to do. Uh, now I'm like, okay, I'm ready. Give me a kid's book to illustrate. Like, you know, give me some sort of project. Um, I know it's only been like a month and a half, if that, but I'm just aching to create art for kids. I want to get amazing. back to it. Yeah, but your growth in the last um, month and a half has been amazing. I mean, being your friend on Facebook and getting to see the uh, transition of, uh, you know, your your rough sketches, which to me were not rough at all, because I have a very hard time drawing. I'm not a two-dimensional artist. That would be an area that I would need to spend a lot, a lot of time on and really challenge myself. Um, I'm much more... I'm much uh, happier in a three-dimensional space uh, sculpting. And so seeing your transition of um, the arc of, of the work, I love the pasta piece. I'm going to pu pull it up for a second just so everybody can see it. Um, you have to share too. I will. Oh, that is really exciting. I signed up. I did this painting recently of Keely Smith singing in the rain. Um, she's my favorite singer. I met her. I had the luck to meet her before she passed um and i fangirled over her so hard that she finally turned to me and said honey you're cute but you're kind of freaking me out <laughs> she was really kind of taken aback 
So I did this like really cute Keely Smith piece. Um, if you don't know her, she was married to Louis Prima and they did lots of songs together. Um, and a friend of mine named Ellie on Facebook saw that piece and she said, hey, there's this, um, you know, there's this woman named Lila Rogers. Have you heard of her? Never heard of her ever. Oh, she's, um, she's an art agent and she really likes art that's similar to this, this sort of like, you know, mid-century modern, like nostalgic, you know, nod to children's books kind of thing. And you should go look at her website. So I did, and I saw that she teaches classes. Um, and so this was my exam that was due today. <laughs> for the bolt fabric portion of the classes. Wow. And so now, you know, thinking, oh, what kind of fabric can I make now? Um, I started designing tape, like fabric that could become tablecloths for entertainers, for puppeteers, for magicians, for balloon twisters, for face painters. So I'm starting like uh, fabrics for all these different entertainers that can become tablecloths or clothing or bags, you name it. Um, I'm just excited to figure out what I can do with this passion I have. I get so excited when it comes to illustrating for kids or, or like sort of that um, nostalgia vintage look. Yes. I think what kind of packaging can I create? You know, like what else, what else is there besides just, you know, a print? How do I um, make it not share? Click the red. Oh, there. Yes. Okay, good. Ha. <laughs> Ta -da. We're learning things. Um, uh, I, I, I saw that one um, in the mix of the ones that you sent us, and I was like, yes, because it really is. Uh, I'm so glad that you mentioned that it was your uh, final for today, because it really is just so beautiful. Um, for, it, the, for the bolt portion, yeah. And I have to be honest with you. I am used to being a big fish in a small pond because I've been in the body paint and face paint industry for a number of years and I teach at conventions. I, you know, um, you know, I'm on this thing called Baba TV, which is face and body art television. And I have followers that watch that. So I'm used to being like the one that knows what they're doing that people turn to and say, how do I do this? And I show them. Now I'm taking these classes and I have no clue what I'm doing compared to everyone else in it. I am the tiniest fish in the ocean and the, it's scary. It's scary going from one extreme to the other, but I'm reminding myself every day as I see all the other entries and assignments the other students put out and their bolt fabrics and their products. And I'm like, I don't know how to do any of that. That as long as I am surrounding myself with lots of people that are far more talented than I am, um, I will always have a lot to learn. So that's my mission now is to make sure that I, I enjoy and sort of stop stressing out and instead enjoy being that little fish. Yeah. Take it all in. Yeah. Um, what is, uh, what do you think um, is going to happen with your face uh, and body art industry? Um, I mean, you, I, I see that not only are you taking this time to learn and grow in your art as an artist, but are you foreseeing a time where you're going to be able to get back to painting on people? Um, and what, how does that feel? I certainly or... hope so. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Well, that's, that's a great question for everyone in our industry. Um, yeah. Now, different states are opening up at different rates, and there are other people in the states that they are back to painting. In fact, um, as recently as this weekend, wow. some people I know they, that don't live in New York, they just started getting back to it. I don't think that's going to happen here anytime soon. Um, we have been spending a lot of time learning new hygiene techniques, which like some of it is just really intense and there's a lot of science and chemistry involved and you know you want to dilute this much bleach into this water to clean your brushes at the end of the day and then dry them this way and it's like we were very hygienic before but with a pandemic you realize that there's this whole other like you know this whole other part that you have to learn that's even more intense than what we were previously doing. And that's face and body painters everywhere. That's not just my company. Um, we have all come together, competing companies 
who normally compete for clients, we're all learning together and supporting each other and saying we all should come together right now and love and support each other and, and learn from each other. And we're creating products, um, products for disinfecting in a, in a more intense way or for covering our faces, but not covering it so much that the child can't see a smile and, and that the children are still happy to see us because little kids can get scared if you're totally covered and you walk in in a hazmat suit, you know. Um, so we're all, the entire industry is working hard to figure out the safest way to get back to doing what we love. And we're all sharing advice with each other. It's really beautiful. Um, and so I, I'm really feeling in my heart that there will be a time where the cheeky chipmunk will be able to reopen and do what we used to do, but it's going to be different than before. And that's okay. Yeah. Um, how are you all uh, sharing information um, together? Is it mostly through Facebook groups? Do you have a union or a national organization that, uh, how are you all disseminating and sharing? That's a great question. So we have Facebook groups. Um, we've got Faba TV, uh, Face and Body Art Television. There's lots of classes happening now. Um, that's fabatv.com where they are saying, oh, okay, you know, usually it's here's a class on how to paint a dragon. Here's a class on how to paint a butterfly. And now it's like, here's a class on how to redo your entire kit so that we can have these products and the best way to sanitize, the best way to make kids comfortable and safe. And so people are watching these classes. Um, and also there are great websites and resources. One of them I love is Silly Farm, um, which is the cutest name, but they're a children's entertaining company that also creates products. And they're coming out with whole lines of things um, and they're being so sweet. They're putting together all these videos that for free, they're just sharing with all the artists and saying, hey, we've, you know, they, they bought one of these, this little device that like figures out how many germs are on a surface and they mm -hmm. touch the surface with it and then they get a number and it's really expensive. I couldn't afford something like that. Um, and, uh, but they're a big company, they can do that. And then they say, okay, we're gonna show you before you paint this number, you know, but then if you, if you clean this way or in this order, then look at the number, look how low it is. And now, you know, this is sanitized and everyone's just learning. It's like a big online school between the Facebook groups, um, videos on YouTube. Um, and we have groups here in New York. We've got our tri-state board group where, uh, amazing, amazing painters from the tri-state area who, yeah, I mean, we're, we have competing companies, but we're all still friends and we still really care about each other and we've been experimenting with things. So it's, it's become this time where we all step back from what we're doing, but have a lot of hope we're gonna get to do it again and just trying to create new practices to keep people safe, not just from this pandemic, but from you know anything. And I know we're gonna do it. I feel it in my bones when I see photos of other painters like um, our friend Eliza who paints in Oklahoma and she was allowed to paint today because of the phase Oklahoma is in uh, in reopening and she had on her brand new like face shield that's like covering her entire face and it's a face painter and she's got a mask with a big smile but cute flowers glued to it so the kids still think it's horrible and she's you know dressed in bright colors and she's painting the kids again with gloves on and it's like a whole new thing but you know that gave me a lot of hope that we'll get there we just have to do it learn how to do it differently but we'll get there wow wow um what is uh your like what at what point would you feel comfortable working a party um, cause that's something that Chad and I and our company keep talking about is, well, what would it look like? At what point would we be okay with doing an outdoor party? And then at what point would we be okay with doing an indoor party? And, you know, we're definitely following yeah. what's happening with schools and, and kind of taking the lead on that. But right. I would just love to hear what your thoughts are on that. Um, for me, I wouldn't feel comfortable face painting um, right away. Uh, I 
have said to the artists that I work with, hey, here's what I think our plan should be. We're going to keep an eye on when school is allowed to go back into session, because then that tells me that maybe that means that it's safe for kids to come together again. Um, and in the meantime, we're not doing parties because social distancing is still important in the New York City area. But when that starts to uh, sort of turn into different phases, we're thinking like phase three and so on, not face painting, but saying, okay, we can send an entertainer to your home and create balloon sculptures from 10 feet away and then leave them there. You know, the kids can watch the performers twist um, or we could do, you know, uh, like airbrush tattoos where no one's touching each other it's you know there's still a distance it's not like there's paintbrushes and sponges being shared and so on so there's still things we can do that would entertain the kids right now we're just waiting for when it when is it okay to have friends come over i mean i still haven't had friends come over um you know when i visit my friends we're you know, six feet apart on the front stoop and waving with our masks on. But when, when um, the city says, okay, you know what, you can start to have your friends over again and give people a hug, just be cautious. Then we're going to look into, okay, now let's go, but let's proceed with caution. We're not going to face paint right away, but we can offer glitter tattoos or airbrush tattoos or twisting from a distance. And then finally, the last thing will be face painting because it's more contact and you're contacting a lot of um, like the, you know, like sinus areas and so on. So maybe start with face painting, but only on the arm and not on the face. And we're all just still trying to figure all of that out. Um, I'm going to start thinking about it in phase three, seeing where things are, but definitely phase three or four, but not even phase two. I just yeah. don't think that it's worth the risk. Yeah. I think there are other things that people can do for kids' parties that are safer. And mm -hmm. for anybody who is just joining us, um, Lenore is a very accomplished face painter. How many years have you been face painting at this point? Uh, but almost eight. Okay. Um, and I was pretty terrible when I first started. Kids, like I've had a couple of kids cry on me when they saw oh. the mirror. Oh, no. But you know, like, here's the thing, you guys know this, because you love what you do, is that I had sort of this um, pattern before I discovered face and body painting, where I would get really excited about something and say, oh, I'm going to do that with my life. I'm going to be an interior decorator. No, I'm going to be an architect. No, I'm going to be a singer. And I would try it and not fall in love. Like, it's like, you know, when you get the butterflies, when you meet someone and you're just like, you know it's love and you're just so excited. Um, it would be like an infatuation that wouldn't last long and then I would drop it like a hot potato. And this was the first thing in my life um, at, you know, in my late thirties that I finally found where I was so passionate about it, even though I was bad at it. I loved it so much. I enjoyed it that I didn't want to stop. And I kept on, I would stay up late. My husband would say, you know, what time is it? You should come to bed. And I'd say, after one more zombie, I have this like dummy head, which is really funny to take to conventions. Um, because when you're going to the airport, it just looks like this decapitated head in your suitcase. <laughs> but <laughs> I say, no, no. I'm a face painter, I swear. Um, I started scotch taping my business card to the head just so that they'd like, you know, not freak out too hard. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, when you love what you do, you don't want to stop. And what happens when you don't stop and you're constantly doing it is you get better fast. And so I went from like, I mean, I can show you pictures where it's unrecognizable. There was a girl who wanted to be a dolphin. And at the end, I'd never painted a dolphin. And at the end, she was like, why do I look like Cookie Monster? Oh, no. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, she totally looks like Cookie Monster. <laughs> I, I thought very literally, right? I was like, okay, dolphins are kind of blue, so I'll make her blue. Dolphins have eyes like on the side. So I tried to like give her an eyeball here and an eyeball here. 
And then she looked like Cookie Monster. Oh, and I love showing that picture to my students, my new painting students, when they're like, oh, I'm really bad. I'm like, honey, <laughs> look at this. Um, now I realize when they say I want to be a dolphin, they don't mean I want to be a dolphin. They want a beautiful dolphin on their face with palm trees and like the ocean, you know, and I'm learning to think less literally. Um, so, you know, I, but yeah, I love it so much. And now I love illustrating so much that I'll be, it'll be two in the morning and I'll be like, I'm going to design some wrapping paper that maybe no company will ever look at and buy. But I just got that itch, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's been so inspiring watching you, you progress. Um, and you're a mom too. We want to make sure to mention that this is the puppet parent podcast and we are parents and this you, you are as well. How's it been going? Um, I, we were in New York city up until two weeks ago. So we were in it with you and, uh, we, we got yeah. we were very blessed to be able to leave and come out to, um, Western New York where Chad's parents live for the summer. But, um, you know, we, we feel for you, you know, still being in New York city. Um, it's definitely a different vibe out here. Uh, where we are the crazy right. cautious people. Um, and, uh, <laughs> you know, everybody else is like, you guys need to chill out a little bit. And we're like, I don't think you understand, you know, <laughs> like, it's crazy. You don't know what's coming if you don't. Yeah, you don't yeah. know what we've seen. Like, <laughs> we didn't leave our place for three months. So, so how's it been going? Yeah. With oh, yeah. Um, thanks to the puppets that you helped Ralph make very well. Aww. Um, so, uh, for those who, who haven't, yeah, I, I, they're an amazing tool. So Ralph is autistic. He first met, um, Z and also Cheryl Henson through the fact that he loves the dark crystal, like really loves it, especially fizz gig. That's his favorite. Yay. And so there was, um, uh, a book signing at Barnes and Noble, mm -hmm. um, and with uh, that Cassine Gaines had written this amazing book, and you know, and so I thought I brought Ralph with me because I thought, well, you know, let's go buy the book and meet the people, and um, he was so excited, and he and Cheryl afterwards just bonded like peas in a pod. It was so cute. He kept like hugging on her and trying to talk to her, and so you guys were nice enough to have us come and, and look at these puppets who were working on. And it was amazing to me um, through one of these sessions um, at the Museum of Moving Image, how he responds to the puppets in a way that he was not at that time responding to humans. And the, when you got down on the floor with him and you and Cheryl were like using the puppets to talk to him and he was really communicating in a new way. Um, so, you know, since then, oh, through quarantine, he, his new puppet is a butterfly. Um, and he loves his butterfly. And the butterfly and the, the two that we made in your class have been really helpful in explaining what is coronavirus. What, you know, why can't you go to school right now? Why do you have to have homeschool? Because he likes things to be the same, right? He likes routine. He's a kid that's like, it's seven o'clock. It's time to eat dinner. It's 8.45. It's time for my vitamins. Like he's very rigid. Um, and so they have been very helpful in helping him understand uh, when he lost his first molar, you guys were there to help him through it with your, um, yeah, with your fox. Fox I'm people. so happy to hear <laughs> your that. Fox puppet show. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's all connected. It's all like what we all do for kids that we love and care about and want to reach. Um, it's just this tapestry of, of different talents that all work together, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things that um, some of some us in the puppetry industry are talking about is um, screen fatigue with a lot of the kids. And what is the summer going to look like? Um, and I'm wondering if you have any thoughts on that. So Ralph, being in a District 75 school, he normally, his summer is, uh, it's sort of like a day camp 
special ed school where it's not academic, but they still have services like speech therapy and occupational therapy and all the therapies. Um, but they do it with more arts and crafts and singing and dancing and sort of what you would expect in a summer daycare kind of thing. And um, they can't do that this year. Uh, which is upsetting to us because he grows so much from it. He learns about how to be more social with the kids and play games with them more and how to create next to them, like building crafts together and things like that. Um, they do a lot of puppets with socks and paper bags. And these are all things that he's going to have to miss out on, which uh, is frustrating. But at the same time, we are trying to use as many resources as we can through the computer screen fatigue for sure. But you know, like tuning into your broadcasts on Fridays or um, like he's really into going on to YouTube and finding science experiments to do. So we're going to try and have our own, you know, Koppelman summer camp at home and uh, see what happens. Lots of art, lots of science, which he loves science and math. Those are his favorites. Yeah. And try and do it here, but it's not going to be the same, you know, and I'm not a speech therapist or a physical therapist or an occupational therapist. I don't really know how to do that stuff. Yeah. So I'm just hoping that, um, I can figure it out. Mm -hmm. I think I think a lot of parents are winging it, <laughs> and that's okay. Yeah, you know we're we're definitely yeah. winging it too. And like our our littlest one, we're just tucking yeah. him into bed, and he said, because um, we have this morning routine of like waking up and eating and changing, and then like getting into his schoolwork, like making sure all the schoolwork's done. And he's like, Daddy, I'm gonna wake up before anybody else and do all my schoolwork. And if I, had, if I need anything, I'm going to wake you up so you can get my schoolwork done. Because he's just so into the idea of just like, get it all done quickly so I can play. Yeah. Yeah. But he's five. So his schoolwork <laughs> involves us reading to him and, um, you know, giving him some things to thread onto a pipe cleaner. Yeah. So how, I, how is he reading yeah, to him? He's, <laughs> he's in pre-K this year. He'll be in kindergarten next year. Um, and, uh, oh, my God. I know they're getting big, um, and then uh, Leaf, our it's our so seven year old, will be in second grade next year. Um, yeah, I, th I think we've run out of chapter books wow. in the entire house. Mm -hmm. And this the, this night, he was like, go, he was like, "Go get me some chapter books." And I was like, "No, you have to say please." And then why don't you go get them? But literally, I was looking. I was like, "Oh my god, there's like a hundreds and hundreds of." Um, uh, like non chapter books, like picture regular books. picture books, because my mom books. was a kindergarten teacher and she just has them hoarded, stashed. Uh, but no chapter books. So, Very few. so yeah, and we're what there are, they're out. from like the 50s. But the local library is open, so we could make a run yes. to the library for him. But they're open. <laughs> See, there Western go. New York, it's a little different. Um, they, they're open. Not I think very different. <laughs> it is. Yeah. It is. Yes. Um, but also, I'm very aware that. Uh, I seem like the crazy person a lot of the time lately because, you know, nobody is really as concerned as I am, you know, uh, not to be like, I'm the most concerned. They have a been here. I, I, you know what? I, we've been through trauma, man. Like when you see yeah. 21,000 of your fellow city neighbors die, like that's a real fear. Yeah. That is real. And, you know, when I was trying to describe to um, my mother-in-law the other night uh, what was happening around the time of, let's see, mid-April. What was mid-April like? And I said, well, we were trying to file for unemployment. We were attempting to get a PPP loan. Uh, we were trying to file our taxes and finish those. Uh, we had our windows open because it was really yeah. nice out finally. And the sirens kept going 24 seven, like nonstop. Right. Mm -hmm. Remember that? And that was crazy. Well, we, we live pretty close. I mean, I would say about a mile or less from Mount Sinai, Queens. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, just constant, constant sirens and the, the the part that was just most upsetting was at night you would just hear sirens up and down our block and the, the entire bedroom at night would glow this like blinking light 
<laughs> and we'd look and like there was always an ambulance across the street or two doors down or whatever and we'd look out the window and see neighbors that live on our street being wheeled out on gurneys like you know to go to the hospital and i'd be like oh no mr so-and-so is you know being pushed in and it was really scary to see that all around you and then to talk to people in different states where oh it's not a big deal it's just like a little flu and i'm like you yeah. have no idea yeah like exactly. you have no idea what this is well i, I feel like it was a little it's so like, traumatic uh, well, it was, was kind of like we, we we went on to our this tiny village's probably uh, second ever protest i mean maybe they've had protests in the past but it was the second black lives matter protest i'm gonna guess ever yeah because i don't think that they were involved uh -huh. My guess is they were not involved three or four years ago when yeah, the movement started. Probably not, but but like we we made our signs down here, and um, you know it's like I grew up in this town. You know I spent my first nineteen years uh, plus here, and there was only like one. You know it's it's like a lot of um, it's very homogenous. It's like mostly white, and there was like one black kid in high school, and I you know, can't imagine what it was like for them. Um, but, uh, we made our signs and our signs were like hard. I didn't think our signs were hardcore until we got out there. Cause my sign was, we have not talked about this no, yet, no, by no. the way. My, my sign, my sign was, 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 uh, was racism is the virus. And Z had this black fist icon, you know, yep. it's like black lives matter and listing out the names. Yeah. Mine of... said like, say his name, George Perry Floyd, say her name, Brianna Taylor. And you know, uh, that's I, I felt like they were very generic signs right like you see those you see those anywhere and then we get out there and we're like okay cool there's a crowd and the other signs are like peace and love and <laughs> let's listen to each Be other, nice to each and other. Like, all this like mamby pamby <laughs> yeah. you know not to knock it because they showed up but it was no still no just no, like... no. It, it's just a different vibe <laughs> yeah. we were totally the new york city yeah. people coming in with our fists and they were all doing this like that and, and that, you know we need to like chill out a little uh, like in some ways um and i, I mean you know i it's it's, it's just, only it's been just, a week and a half or it, so it's just it's just a different kind of yeah, feel it's a vibe it's a different vibe yeah, we came in with our with our eyes open <laughs> well, like, you know God. you know Oof. well that's how z and i met we met at a protest at a huge oh, daylight right. protest. That's right. We so were, that's we how we met. We rode the bus to yeah. DC together. Mm hmm That's right. Yeah, we we sat in the Jason. Yeah, and um and it, yeah, it was it was very funny because I had no idea who you were, what you did for a living, or anything. I was just like, she's so passionate, and she's such she, you know she's great. And every single time somebody saw you know marching around DC, and somebody saw a puppet. That was like a protest puppet. They'd go, see, see, look. And I'm like, this chick really digs puppets, apparently. <laughs> I'm like, she's really into the puppets because everyone's calling her name. They're like telling her to come over and look, and she's taking pictures of the puppet. Like, okay, that's her thing. I don't judge. And then <laughs> it is my thing. It's totally my thing. Right? I was like, oh, that's her thing. Hey, you know, okay, we all got our thing. And then um, we rode all the way back, you know, slept on the bus on the way back, woke up. And I was like, I don't want to say goodbye to this girl. She's amazing. So I said, do you have a card? And you gave me your card. And I'm like, okay, what does she do? And I'm like, oh, oh, okay. That explains a lot. <laughs> now I understand. But that's how we met. Yeah. Yeah. That was so funny. Oh, that was such a good trip. That was we had good signs that oh, oh, I had my banner that I had made. I had made this bit huge banner yes. that was a quote from Susan B. Anthony. And um I can't remember the exact quote right now, but it's very fitting um for the moment that we were in. And And then we saw the suffragettes. It, yeah, it was it was it was about um the right to vote in some capacity, but uh I'll have to pull it up. Um, it's a good photo. No, she was saying. I'll put it in the comments. So, so she was saying, like, remember when you found? Oh yes, jets, yes, so. at the end. So that was like we we're, we're all exhausted. Yeah. Everyone has been placing their signs, their protest signs, like on the fence of the White House. You know, on our way back. You know, okay. we're passing all the Capitol buildings, and then 
some, I, we look mm -hmm. just far ahead in the distance and we see it's like, it's like a mirage almost like these women dressed up in 1800s like clothing, standing in front with their protest signs, like from the 1800s in front of the Capitol building, like picturesque. And they're just getting their picture taken and they're about to leave. And everyone's like, go get them Z. And I'm like, I'm doing it. <laughs> and so I'm running with my banner because my banner was a recreation of a Susan they B. Anthony so banner. And I said, I have your banner. I have your banner. <laughs> and they're like, what? And then they I show them and they're like, were so oh excited. my God. And, and I'll tell you, we are still yeah. friends, me and those ladies. We are still friends. <gasps> from, they were from the North no Carolina way. area. So sweet. Um, oh, we, we still God. like each other's posts. I love that you kept in contact with them. Oh, yeah. I mean, we are linked. Oh, my God. <laughs> but I have a picture um, that shows me with the ladies and then the original suffragettes with their original banner. Um, and I'll, I'll post it in the comments when we're done here because it, it was, that was magic, oh, that, that, was, that moment. It was, that was a magical moment. Oh, that, that, that was that meant March to was be amazing. that moment. But then, you know, when we finished uh, at the yeah, protest today sure. in Springville, which, by the way, was um, so special to get to do a protest here because, you know, the weekend that we were moving out here, so two weekends ago, um, it was we, we, we were so fraught with um, we were we were happy to be leaving New York because the kids need the outdoor time like it's going to be more relaxing out here like we're so fortunate to get to have like a space we have this residency how great but then also the movement is finally taking hold you know this movement that so many of us have been a part of already for years and finally so people woke up to the fact that it isn't about them right and it isn't about like right um, the, you know wanting to hurt police it's about this bigger idea and notion of systemic racism and how people aren't just not treated equally and you might not call yourself a racist but oh hello you do racist things that you did not even realize were racist you know and that we all could be doing better yep. and i just you know, oh my God, it was happening. And here we are driving away, leaving. And it just felt like, oh God, you know, why are, what? and it's in the middle of a effing global pandemic. Like, it's just crazy, you know, like, could we even like safely be out there with everybody sharing in that moment? Probably not. So getting to do something here, you know, we were talking to the staff of the Center for the Arts who allowed us for us to have this residency. And at the end of our meeting this past week, I had said, oh, and if there is anything in town having to do with Black Lives Matter at all, at all, we want to be there. And he said, oh, yeah, mm -hmm. there's going to be a thing. There's going to be a small thing. And yeah, I'll send you the email. So we were like with about 30 other people, you know, standing on Main Street with our signs. And, uh, and it was awesome. Oh my God. It was awesome. Cause you know what, you know, and um, you've always yeah, like nobody expects small town America to show up. It's all about the cities. So here we are That's in right. small town America and, and we're just, we are, we are not, to, you know, we're not the crazy city folk coming in to like change things. We're just taking part in what they're doing and it's awesome. So but it's but it's so well, different. Well, you've always been passionate about it because I remember the first time we met for dinner after the protest, uh, we went to the beer garden, mm -hmm. and you wanted to talk to me about um, doing some face painting for for Henson at the museum. So we showed up there, and you walked in with a Black Lives Matter shirt. Um, maybe it's the one you're wearing now. I don't know. And this was what year was that? It was years ago. It would have been I was like, 20, dang, 2017, girl. it would have been, yeah, a couple yeah. years ago, at least. And I, I remember thinking at the time, like, you know, being very ignorant, about thinking, well, I have a lot of Black friends and Black family members, and I've even, you know, dated Black people, and so I'm not racist, and I'm, I'm really cool and hip and you know and then you walk in and I'm like yeah I've got to do better she is putting herself out there 
And um, it was a huge inspiration when you walked in mm -hmm. to the beer garden, this like very sweet little white girl wearing a Black Lives Matter shirt and you had like a, a band on your arm. And I was like, woo. Yeah. <laughs> and I loved how unafraid and you were, you were just like, yeah, let's do it. Let's fight for what's right. And I was like really inspired by that. Aww. And now, you know, I'm like, okay, I'm going to order this shirt. Oh, so, wow. yeah, I'm right there with you now. Uh, be prepared. This shirt. I, um, I mean, I, I wear it, you know, fairly regularly um, because it's something that matters to me all the time, not just when there's protests. And so, you know, over the last few years, the protests of the protests go down and um, it's uh, or, or Ab is down here. Flo is up here. Anyway, um, but yes, they rise and fall. So I, but I would still wear it. And here's the thing is that when you wear a shirt like this, it is inviting a conversation. So I have had mm -hmm. really positive interactions with people and I have had very negative interactions with people. And so, you know, the, the, when I'm getting dressed in the morning, I just take a deep breath and I say, I can handle it today. Today, I, some days, I'm just gonna be honest, some days I can't handle it. And I know that that's not- You, you know, don't have the spoon. I, I, and, and you know what? How, how privileged am I to be able to say, today I can't handle it, right? And then to choose to not wear right. it. Because if I was black, it's not like I could choose to not wear my black identity. I can't choose that. Right. So sometimes I say, oh yeah. no, you don't get to do that today. And then I wear it anyway, even if I'm not feeling like it because because I then have to go to that place in my brain. Um, and right. I'll say that the um, that the, any time that somebody has felt like they needed to say something negative to me, I just tell myself that I'm making them feel so uncomfortable that they cannot not say something to me about it, you know? But I've had, you know, I've been walking with my kids. I've had people like lean out their window and feel like they need to absolutely tell me what a horrible person I am. And, but I've also had people come up to yeah. me, and say, thank you. And so, you know, yeah. uh, uh, the thank yous means like oh, the world to me. And I don't care at all about what the haters think, because if anything, it's like, right. there are more of us than there are of you. And um, I'm just a little more vocal about it um, because I just feel like I can be. And um, I mean, yeah. you can ask Chad. I, I, I don't, I'm not quiet. So if I see, if I see racism or something that's not right, I'll call it out immediately. Yeah. Um, you remember that time that we were at the yeah. restaurant? Well, and you've, you've been my dad as long as I've known you. Like this, is, you know, for anyone who's watching who doesn't know Z personally, she's not just into this because it's the new hip thing to be into. This has been like a passion of hers for a super long time before I even gave it a lot of thought when I should have been. Um, so I really commend you for that. My thing that I've been doing lately, I asked a lot of my black friends, you know, like, I, I want to feel like, I don't know what to do. What do I do? And they said, share our voices, share our voices. So what I've been doing, cause as you can tell, I love to talk. I can talk your ear off for hours and it's hard to get a word in. So I've been trying to dedicate my Facebook page to saying, okay, here is what my friend so-and-so who's black has to say today about how they're feeling or what they think. And just instead of posting about myself, I'm trying to post, I mean, there's the occasional funny cat video, I confess. But for the most part, I'm like, okay, here's a voice to listen to. Here's a voice to think about um, everything from text to video, and I feel that sharing voices that have felt neglected for so long is really important right now. So, you know, I don't pretend to know exactly what to do. I don't pretend to be an expert. But if you are a white person watching this saying, I don't know what to do. I can't go to protests and I can't do this or that or I can't wear that shirt. Fine. Share share and share those voices so that more people can listen and hear because not an Enough people have been listening yeah yeah and you know I and I also want to give a shout out to um, uh, any uh, fellow uh, people out there who identify as Jewish because I uh, for me you know when I had my moment of awakening and also reckoning with, with. Um, all of it um, that was 
a few years ago and I suddenly felt this very strong connection between my Jewish identity and um, the uh, black uh, struggle. Um, and while I recognize that there are a lot of differences, there are also a lot of similarities. And I just suddenly felt like it is impossible for me as a Jewish woman to not say something now, like now that I get it, because mm -hmm. I didn't get it before. But now that I do, it's right. my responsibility to stand up and say, no, no, and that's wrong. That's and right. then anytime that we're having a conversation and somebody says, well, I just don't believe in that, then I have to go to the uncomfortable place and say, well, I'm sorry, but you're wrong. And here's why. Um, you know, and usually I don't, I'm not like that, you know, no, usually I'm my, like, oh, we all have our own opinions. Right. <laughs> um, but actually in this case, no, yes. I'm sorry, well, you're just wrong. <laughs> you know, my father, he is 89 years old. He'll be 90 next January and he's a Holocaust survivor. Wow. And something he told my brother and I, um, growing up and he reiterated to us, especially when when a lot of racism started happening um, after Trump was elected and so on, um, he said, you know, because my dad being almost 90 is on Facebook. <laughs> He's not too shabby with the Facebook. Um, but he said to me, you know, when, when I was growing up and he ended up, they came to New York. He and my uncle Ralph is very young children. Um, but he says that his parents, would tell him these stories about, because they were too little to really remember a lot of this, but there would be neighbors that had been lovely with them, very sweet and everything. And then when Hitler came to power, um, they were in support of a lot of what he had to say. And they said, oh, you know, he's a good guy. Um, he doesn't always do the right thing or the best things, but who does? And, um, you know, we can all have differences in opinion and where you don't all agree on the same things. And that doesn't mean we shouldn't be friends. Um, and then when so many family members of mine were thrown into concentration camps, my grandparents were like, yes, tell us more about how, you know, we, we can have these differences and we should still be friends. And they'd say, oh, well, we know you're the nice kind of Jew. You're the good Jew. It's okay. Um, you know, and my dad, when we were growing up, he said, anytime you don't stand up and say, this is wrong, I don't agree with this, you are being like those neighbors that we had that are saying, ah, oh, you know, we can have differences of opinion, it's okay. There's a difference between, you know, do you like the same flavors of ice cream that I like and the same genre of movies, or do you have a different sense of, of what morality is? and how to treat human beings, because that's a totally different kind of difference, you know? And so my brother and I were taught very young that you need to speak up. Now, I also was taught, be a nice girl, be a good girl, don't make waves, you know, be polite, be a lady. And so I grew up being afraid to speak out. So it was like this, oh, I know I should, but I'm scared because I, I want to be a good girl. And lately I'm like, I'm tired of being a good girl. I'm speaking out. Um, and it feels amazing. It feels like I'm honoring my grandparents and all of the relatives that I lost. Yeah. Yeah. Yay. Oh, it's such a crazy time. It is such a crazy time. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I can't. It is um, 2020. I, I know. I, you know, do you, have you like fully accepted what's been happening? Because I feel like I have not, like not fully. I'm, I'm like doing the things that need to get done every day. I'm like, yeah. well, I know this is still happening, but like, I, I feel like there will be a point someday where I'm going to look back and be like, oh my God, all that stuff happened. You know, how, how are you coping? I, I like to pretend like I'm having conversations with myself from six months ago, which sounds really odd, but I have this sort of like back and forth with the imaginary, like Lenore six months ago, where I'm like, hey, you know, you have no idea what's coming. Let me try and prepare you. And as I'm telling her out loud, I'm realizing how absurd it all sounds. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's just... It feels like, how is this all reality? And little things like being a weekend and me not being at a kid's party is bizarre. 
Mm-hmm. Like, I, I, it's been years since a Saturday and Sunday did not belong to the children of New York City. Um, that's really strange. Um, things like going to the stores here in Astoria and there's just like clear shower curtain liners everywhere um, so that people can't be face to face. And you're like going through mazes of clear shower curtain liners at the key food to get to things and like, you know, um, just all of it, all of it's so strange. Seeing my little boy at the window in the morning waiting for the school bus, though he knows it's not coming, just hoping it will. Um, all these things I never, ever imagined. Uh, but at the same time, amazing things are happening too. Uh, I have time to learn new things, new skills. I never thought I'd have the time to do, but always wanted to. Um, the neighbors are all getting to know each other and check in on each other. How are you? We're meeting neighbors we didn't really know before intimately, um, helping them when they're sick. Um, we had a protest on Steinway and 30th, a Black Lives Ma- uh, Matters protest on wow. Steinway and 30th. Like, you know, things like that. So a For lot of bad things have happened and a lot of amazing people. That, that, that is not a black neighborhood. Just so people like really come no. to understand what, what, where that section of Queens, specifically Astoria is. Can you describe like the, the people that mostly sure. live in that neighborhood? Let me put it this way. If any of you have seen the movie A Bronx Tale, that was filmed on those streets, even though this is Queens and not the Bronx. That was filmed there. So if you watch it, you're like, oh, there's our bakery, there's our funeral home, there's our, you know, our church, everything is there. And true to the movie, it's a lot of um, people from, you know, from other countries who come in, um, from Italy, from um, a lot of Italians, a lot of Irish, a lot of you know, we've got people from Bosnia, we've got, like, you name it, and they've been here, it's like the old country. You go to the fish market for your fish, you go to the bakery for your bread, you go to the Greek, you know, place for your fit, for your, you know, like condiments or whatever. It's just this, like, little old country area of Europe, but in Queens. And so to see all of these white people who are like descendants who who I have been used to seeing as people who are like like you know in a Bronx tale when they were like you know we have our kind and this is our kind and we stick to our kind and they were out there protesting I was like wow you know and it was a younger generation the older ones were like "Mm, I like things the way they are let's just keep it this way it's very comfortable for me Mm -hmm. but the younger ones their kids and grandkids were out there and it was amazing. I was just covered in goosebumps. Ah. And it's changing. Change is uncomfortable, but you know, it's necessary. That's amazing. And just a couple blocks away, um, closer to where we live is Little Egypt, where um, you have so many people from yeah. the Middle East and from uh, Bangladesh uh, who all live in that area as well. Um, and uh, it's it's just it has been amazing to um, check in with our neighbors in Astoria and to hear about all of the really positive things coming out of New York City right now. Um, before we leave, is there anything else that you want to touch on about what you've been working on or what you're looking forward to? I'm going to keep on taking lots of classes, um, learning how to do things like illustrating for kids and packaging and bolt fabric and all that stuff. And that does not mean I'm going to stop face painting because it's in my heart. I don't think I could if I tried. Um, Though I think that I'm going to branch out a bit and offer new things. So soon I'll be offering prints. um, And uh, I will also be offering some prints that where the proceeds go to certain things. In fact, I wanted to talk to you about that later and um, get your opinions on what I should donate to where. I love using my art for good and and helping um, people. So uh, yeah, soon my website will not just be a, oh, we're so sorry because of COVID, we're temporarily closed, we miss you kids, but it'll be like a, hey, here's a great way to get some new products and support these different um, movements and um, we'll see you soon. We'll see you at your party soon. Yeah, and Yay. and what's the best place to find you online? 
Um, so my website is thecheekychipmunk.com and certainly on Instagram, I have a very active Instagram and I, I post a lot of the work I'm currently doing there and that's the Cheeky Chipmunk. So please follow me. It, it's a really fun Instagram because I love to share the behind the scenes of what I do and little videos of me creating things and, um, and it's just, it's delicious. Awesome. Yay. Well, thank you so much for being our guest tonight, Lenore. It's been really fascinating getting to hear uh, from you about face painting in the midst of everything that's been going on. And also as just a fellow parent, a fellow activist, and just a fellow awesome human being. So thank you so much. And we hope to- I just have to say we miss you. The story of misses you. Oh. Enjoy your time there, but you better come back. Yeah, we'll come back. Don't you worry. We're so New Yorkers. As long as, long, as long as the DOE gets stuff together by September and New York doesn't have a huge relapse, you know, fingers crossed. Uh, yeah. yeah we'll, we'll definitely be back. But right. It's, but all you people back in New York City, just like everybody here, you got to wear your masks. Wear your masks, please. So, wear your mask. Yes, yeah. that's right. Everybody, come on. We can do this. Yeah. We but 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 maybe a face shield. If, you know, my little boy who I'll has sensory issues. He's got a superhero. Lenore, if That's you cool. design the the face mask fabrics, I'll I'll make some face masks. We can uh, we can co collaborate. Yes, I'm in. Let's do it. Okay. New project. We're in. We're in. I know <laughs> how to design both fabric now. We got. Awesome. All right. We Good love night, you. guys. Thank you so much. We love you. We're going to switch. Love you too. We'll miss you. Thank you. Bye bye. Right. We're going to we're going to kick Lenore. <laughs> Goodbye Lenore. So we we're just going to do a little wrap up. Okay. Here we go. Boom. So, uh, once again, we are the Puppet Parent Podcast. Thanks so much, guys. Uh if if you if you like this podcast, if, uh, tell us how you're listening to it. We're very interested. Maybe we're just nosy. Uh but we're uh, uh, give us a like on Facebook or share this video. Love that. That helps us break out of our social media bubble. Uh, you can check out all of our episodes over at puppetparentpodcast.com. I believe this is our 11th or maybe even 12th episode. Who knows? It's, it's like 12, we're, number 12. We're, number 12. We're, we're past 10. Uh, we're, we're heading, <laughs> we're steam training towards 100. Uh, and these are about like an hour long. Yes, so yeah. Yeah, yeah, so you know, like maybe maybe you're listening to them at the gym, maybe you're getting work done in an, in an office type home office situation. Who knows? Um, but uh, head over to our websites. We're on we're on so many different things. I don't have the list in front of me, uh, but we're definitely on Spotify and Apple and every single popular podcasting device. Uh, we're there. So please like and subscribe. And uh, yeah, we'll yeah. see you next week. We record live. Sundays at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time over on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash Wonder Spark Puppets. All okay. right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Lenore. Bye. Bye. Oh. Okay. I have stopped the live stream. Lenore, are you still there? Nope, she's gone. Okay, goodbye.